recently transitioned from, from playing to, to coaching. How have you found a difference between playing and coaching? Uh, sure, look, uh, it's a bit tricky because obviously I've done the playing more than the coaching. But yeah, it's a, it's a learning curve. Um, kind of, you know, I wake up every day and I feel very blessed that I get to do this. I get to do this coaching thing. But the first gig that I do, I do it at a familiar place with familiar people, footballers that I've played with, footballers that look up to me a lot, you know. So, so glad to be doing it in a familiar place. Uh, such a tough job. Uh, it's, it's much easier to play, to be quite honest, <laughs> you know, because you do you do the talking with your feet. Uh, there's there's more action there than in your mouth. But yeah, I mean, uh, a great learning curve in a very good team with a very good squad. And yeah, I'm very optimistic of what the season has to bring. But you, Cape Town City has proven to be one of the most competitive teams in the season that can finish higher than they finish. What's, what's the ambition for this season at, at Cape Town City? What, what are the conversations that are happening about how high can we go? Yeah, look, obviously, uh, I think you would have seen in my career, I'm a guy that likes to compete but compete uh, and also dominate and also do very well. Uh, obviously, when I came back to the club, was to come back and, and play after I left Chiefs, you know? But obviously, there was a problem with my knee, as we all know, and there was a gap for me to come help the coach, to just bridge the gap between the players and the coach and just be that middle guy, you know? But yeah, I mean, uh, just to answer your question, I just think, you know, uh, I forgot your question. Question was how high can City? How high can finish we finish? This uh, yeah, yeah. Full, of, full of talent we've seen with yeah, you. Okay. Can compete. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, like Coach Copper said before, you know, uh, everybody wants to win the league because at the beginning we all start with zero. But uh, you also have to be realistic that there are certain teams that are at a higher level. You know, uh, I've, I've, I hear everybody talking about Sundowns and how do you brush off a team with so much talent, with so much uh, 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 um, history, uh, recent on current champions, you know. Obviously, Pirates have taken it a little, a little bit higher. Orlando has become a difficult place. You can't write off Chiefs because I think Chiefs has the biggest fan base in the country and wherever they go, they always have a, an energy that they bring with the crowd, which is very vital, trust me, I know very well. And if they can mix that with the players that are there and hopefully help out the new coach, you can always count Chiefs. Uh, there are always teams like Supersport, Coach Gavin is never easy. Uh, Staley's have shown what they can do. Uh, I count them in at the top right now. You know, uh, Sikukuna will, will compete very good. So there will be a lot of teams that are looking at, at, at that top six position. Or let me just say, the four places maybe after Sundowns and Pirates will be very interesting. But yeah, I mean, like I said, two years back when I got back to the club, I had a bit of a feeling that uh, the club had now not really wanted to compete. The club was okay with being top three, top four, which is very good. But there are cups during the year, you know, to win, you know. And the league itself, for me, at the moment, is kind of open, you know. And can we have a go at it? Yeah, I think we could possibly try our best, you know. Uh, the most important games won't be your Sundowns, Chiefs, Paris. It's, uh, it's playing the other teams that are as small as us. Uh, so we're trying to improve on that mostly because we didn't do really bad against the big boys, except for Pirates, which we lost to twice. We took four from Sundowns. They are the champions. We took four from Chiefs, I think, also. We took a three in Joburg and we drew in Cape Town. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a guy that doesn't like to make up the numbers. And I was, pre I was pretty clear when I got to the club that, you know what, boys, we don't want to sit here for a year and just be happy with, with just being in the league. You know, we have to go for things. We have to compete and believe that we are good enough. And with the personnel that we've brought, like you said, we are there to, to not to make up the numbers. We're there to compete, to play good football and which we will play good for. We've shown in the, the three games that we've played what we can do. But we're also a new team with new guys that are trying to get into the system. So it's going to get better, trust me. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very tough season because uh, we are very mindful and we know that each and every team is probably better than last season. So we're not the only one that are going to be better. People are going to be better. So there's going to be a level that we can possibly reach that is there for us to reach and we are looking at doing that. Coach, do you think the club has realistically replaced Kanye Samayo when we look at your the signing that you've made? Uh, look, you can never replace a, a top goal scorer like Mayo. It's impossible to do that. Uh, so I don't want to put pressure on the other guys to say, have we really replaced him? Uh, look, you can't replace him. Uh, I think he's, he's got a natural ability, like he's dead, to score goals. For me, I, I, I don't think he'll struggle to score goals. He's already gone there. In his first three friendly games, he scored three. 
you know, that, that guy can score goals, so we can't replace Mayo. But I, but I can tell you that the players that are in there, Jody Ashin is a boy that's coming from the DDC. He was to, top of the scorers in the DDC last season. If we didn't take him before the season ended, he probably would have been the top goal scorer there. So he's got a bright future. He will score goals for us. Amadou is coming in uh, a different striker to Mayo, a striker that we thought maybe we didn't have. You know, uh, Mayo is a mover, Jody is a mover. Amado is more a guy that can link up play, you know, so to help us in the away games where we need to maybe secure the ball even more, you know. So we're looking at, at finding ways where we can use different systems to face different teams. So we couldn't really, I can't say we've replaced Mayo, we will never replace Mayo. His goals are special because he's special in that sense. But yeah, we've done very well to bring in players that I think will help us and take us to a higher level. Also. Just lastly from my side, you know, the chairman, um, has been vocal about trying to sign Kemi Terasmus. Are those the conversations that you are having in the club? And are you guys still interested in signing him? Uh, look, man, uh, to be quite honest, you know, that's between the club, uh, the boss, and and and, uh, and Kemit and the coach, I think, you know. Uh, they've had those conversations. I know how good Kemit is. I've played with him uh, ever since. Him and Gamu were in the same team, actually, when I played against them at under 13. So I've known them for that long, you know, uh, in that famous super sport team with your Zongos and your Mukekes, you know. So I know how good he is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the chairman and the coach make the final decision. Could he help us? Yeah. Kemet is quality. He's got quality. When he's at top of his game, fit and ready to play, one of the best we've had in the country, you know. But yeah, I mean... Look, the window closes on the 20th of September, if I'm not mistaken. So there's still more time to see. We've got games to play. You never know what might happen. Football has a lot of things that happen very quickly, but there's also unfortunate moments like injuries. God, I forbid it happens. But yeah, we might need him, and it might happen, and it might not happen, you know. But that's football for you. But uh, I'll personally tell you, I, I haven't really been involved in that. Also on the capacity of the fact that I work with the coach, and Kemet is my friend also, so I'm a bit of in the middle. I don't want to get involved in it. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind having Kemet at my club at any time because I know a fit and focused Kemet can take us, honestly, to the championship. Last one, Coach. Uh, the introduction of the uh, arrival of uh, Fortune Makarenga, uh, obviously a player that brings a lot on the field and also in the dressing room. How, how has it been to have uh, what yeah, now, you, now, now that you've touched on that, if you look back last season, we had, honestly, a young squad. Yeah, we had seniors, Tami, I uh, was there, Nodada is still there, uh, Darren is still there. But if you look properly, uh, I think we left a bit in that department with the young boys, you know. Uh, we lost Phyllis, we lost Makola, we lost Mashejo, we lost uh, Mtu. These are all seniors, we lost Surprise, you know. So these are all seniors and they were not really replaced. You need a core in a team, you need guys that are experienced. And your fortunes, your Hesh, your Kamu, even a guy like Prince Chueza, who many people don't know, but he's a full international for Namibia. He played the AFCON. And for me, if a guy has played there, that shows a higher level of, of maturity. That Oak has played in difficult places. So his experience comes in handy. Petras is a big Namibian player also. So we try to get the spine very, very, very good. But also, we've got kids like uh, Lolo, uh, Sefumba is still there, that we think, you know, a guy like Kamu comes in and gives probably two years of his contract, but in the sense that now the boys that are coming under him learn all the things that he's learned so that they can in two years time be at the level of Mokocho. So that's the whole idea behind all the guys that you see. With Fortune, uh, Fortune is a, is a top boy. Uh, we don't need to talk about football with Fortune. I think we need to talk about the guy, the person first, what he brings to the change room. Uh, look, uh, I'm not really a follower of things that happen on Instagram, but he's, you can see on his Instagram. Charismatic, very wholesome in his approach, very positive. Um, but the biggest thing and the most important thing, and I told him and I said, uh, look, when you left Pirates, uh, you had done your part. You had a dream to play for Pirates. You played and it's done. Somebody else needs to come and fulfill their dream. Places like that you don't really attach yourself to. You just be grateful that you played there and you were able to share experiences that probably not many footballers will play so it's a W. Take that with you. You're not here to revive a career. You're here to continue a journey. Pirates is going here at your time. They gave you all the respect and I think they will give him the respect forever because of the person that he is. But now he comes in as a player that continues for me. And that's big and I think his personality has taken up the the leadership role in the team and his energy has just revitalized everyone and he's a good guy for our boys because we still got a lot of kids coming in also and we're still gonna see a lot of them. And I know Fed Boy is the one kid that you know, but there's more 
of him that are as good as him that are coming. And you need guys like Fortune that can welcome them and make them feel uh, important and be part of the group also.